Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da Habitin fillah the question was asked about what does Islam say about being positive or a positive mental attitude as we have come to know this term and of course the Sharia and Islam in general shows us to be positive that we should have a positive outlook that we should be positive and spread good and positive towards the other believers and that we should be positive in our attitude because how else can you do da'wah the law if you're negative how else can you call people to tawheed in the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam if you are in depression or if you uh, have a wicked outlook and a pessimistic view so Islam in general from the general nusus encourages us to be uh, positive to be good in our manners and to have good manners doesn't it not require that you have a positive outlook on life? How is it that you could possibly be negative about everything and exhibit positive and exhibit khair and goodness? The Prophet ﷺ said, "Ma min shayin athkulu fi mizan mu'min yom al qiyama, yom al qiyama min husn al khulq wa inna Allaha yubghidu al fash al bidi." There isn't a thing which weighs heavier on the scale of a believer than good manners. And verily, Allah hates wicked and sinful speech. Imam Anawi entitled in his book, Riyadh al-Salihin, which is a fantastic book, and I encourage myself and my brothers and sisters to read Riyadh al-Salihin often. And if you are a family man or a wife or what have you, read this in your home, read it to your children, read it to the family. Try to sit with your family at least once a week, twice a week, 10 minutes, read a hadith together. Uh, and especially if you have something from the explanation of the hadith, read this, share this with your family. And it will encourage the positive and it will encourage ilm to be in your household. Imam Anawi said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he entitled a chapter, Bab Nahi An Suwadhan Bil Muslimin Min Ghayra Dharura. He entitled a chapter called The Chapter of the Prohibition of Being Pessimistic or Having a Wicked Negative uh, Thought or View of the Muslims without a necessity to do so. So meaning, when would it be a necessity? Of course, if people are from Ahl Bid'ah, and they are from the people of Fisk and Ma'asi, that's known, then of course you're not going to necessarily have a positive uh, view. You're not going to give them the benefit of the doubt because they have a track record of sinfulness and wickedness. They have a track record of, uh, of Bid'ah, and khurafat, you know, of going astray and deviance. In this regard, with regards to this prohibition for being pessimistic and negative, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, Ya ayu ladhina amanu ajtanibu kathirun min al-dhan inna ba'd al-dhanni ithmun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Hujurat, verse 12, He says, O you who believe, so Allah addresses Ahli Iman, the people of belief, uh, be away from pessimistic thought or negative thought toward, uh, of, of people. Verily, some sin it, uh, some uh, this, some of this pessimism is sinful. And this is a rough translation, but it shows us a that having a wicked outlook, negativity, is sinful. So we learn from this ayat that is first and foremost it's sinful. Secondly, we know and understand that when you have a negative outlook towards anything, the result mostly is negative and it's going to drain and take away from you. 
So for example, if you have, uh, for example, sometimes myself about work, you feel negative. I got to get up. I've got to commute. The, the rat race dealing with the drama that I deal with at work and my students and this and that and the other and all these issues going on. How can I present a positive face if I don't try to get myself back on track if I'm negative? Your students will know you're negative. Your environment, they, they will feel the negativeness and it, it is reciprocated. But if you have a positive attitude, you're work, at least working on your attitude and trying to make the best outlook, you will reciprocate that positive. And it just seems like that is just the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because negative, it's very rare that you get a positive result from negative. And, and correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong. Listen to this hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'an. When Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'an, أنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إياكم الظن وإياكم الظن فإن الظن بع فإن الظن أكذب الحديث متفق عليه ده حديث بخاري المسلم the hadith in which Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه said that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said Iyakum al-dhan. Beware of suspicion. So dhan here, uh, we could translate as suspicion. Beware of dhan or suspicion. For verily suspicion is the akhthabul hadith. It is the worst of speech or the worst of action in fact. That when you're suspicious of someone, that this suspicion is uh, creates uh, you know lying, and it creates negativity, and it creates an evil result, an evil end. Because when you're suspicious of someone, say for example, you're suspicious of your spouse, then you might begin to lie on your spouse. Why? Because you say, oh, I think that, for example, the woman says, I think my husband's texting women. I think my husband is got is on internet sites or he's on Facebook chatting with women or doing this or doing that and the other or he's a girlfriend or he's committing zina or you know even bigger than that from the suavun from the wicked the pessimism the negativity and the suspicion and then that suspicion can cause her then therefore to act in a negative way maybe she begins to uh, you know not speak to him or she begins to spread those accusations and they might be just accusations and that spreads around the community or she may take a, even a go to the courts or something like this take it to a whole other level the point being is what is from the suspicion it breeds other problems so from negativity comes negativity and we're talking about if there's no legitimate cause for this. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, Beware of suspicion. For verily suspicion is the worst of speech. Because you, of course when you have suspicion, that means you're more than likely, if it's negative, you're going to articulate that one way or another to the person you have suspicion about or to others. And that could be spreading lies. It could be spreading wickedness throughout the community. So what we learn from this is the warning against suspicion. And suspicion is what? Is a trait of what? It's a trait of pessimism. It's not a tra trait of positivity and a tra trait of, 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 uh, of uh, you know, a positive and good trait. And that's because it is one of the major sins to be suspicious. So don't be suspicious of your Muslim brothers and sisters even uh, and, and thinking that they're muqtadi'ah without any proof, that they're ahl bid'ah, or that they are a wicked sinner and they're not even involved in those sins. Or whatever the case may be, 
beware of suspicion. And so that we, in general, that's a general rule to beware of suspicion of everyone, Muslim and non-Muslim, that we should have a positive, the one who has a positive outlook, they're in a better position almost in, in every situation, that by being positive, even when things are difficult, it's going to help you in your striving and, and remaining positive and remaining on good in a higher ground. And this positiveness is from Iman. Because the one who is pessimistic, as we already know, and there's ample nasus and text to illustrate that being pessimistic, of course, as we mentioned with the believers, is, is bad and suspicious and, and pessimistic. It's even more so with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that then you become negative with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why positiveness if it's directed positively in the right direction, meaning that you put your positive trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you affirm your trust in your Iman, in your Lord, then this, this is the highest form, you know, in your Iman. It's, it's the most, you know, when you have that positive outlook and you know that Allah is going to come through for you, and you may be tested, but you're still, you know the end result because you've had so many situations in your life where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has turned your situation around. Where you've been tested and then Allah surely comes through as usual. So this is uh, important for us to understand this and we've lost the power, but we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.